What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Took a couple days off. I hope you all had a great weekend. If you celebrated the 4th of July, I hope you had a great 4th of July. So I have been doing some digging over the past few days, and I think I did find something very interesting with the Interledger integration um, with Hyperledger. And I'm going to give a little bit of background here. But I think that the integration with um, Interledger into Hyperledger Quilt is a little bit more than meets the eye based on something that I found. Um, all right, so I'm going to do a um, a brief overview here with some of uh, some of what I've found. So first off, we've got the IETF. The IETF, and if you're not aware, there's like four standards bodies that basically determine the path forward for the internet. Um, I have that here in this presentation as well. The IETF is the Internet Engineering Task Force. And the Internet Engineering Task Force, um, I'll, I'll give you a brief overview. The details of IETF operations have changed considerably as the organization has grown, but the basic mechanism remains publication of proposed specifications, development of proposals, review and independent testing by participants, and republication as a revised proposal, a draft proposal, or eventually as an internet standard. So it, it's an open network of developers and contributors um, that they basically propose rules, they propose ideas, <clears throat> they go through drafts, they go through trials, and then they become part of the internet. So the IETF in 2015 um, mentioned this in their journal, and this is, um, this is about Interledger. Um, interoperable. So inter Interledger is a protocol stack for doing this uh, over the internet. The project was started within a W3C community group in October 2015. Great. We know that Interledger was basically invented by Ripple um, and was gifted to W3C. W3C is another standards body that sets the rules for the internet, basically. Um, if we go into here now, so this is from 2015. I'm only adding this in here is because I got an interesting... DM on Twitter. Um, I won't name who uh, messaged me, but they basically told me to look into um, pause ID, P A U S E, and then the letters I D. If any of you want to find a little bit more information in that, I did find pause ID. I think it was in this one. Yeah. Um, but this isn't real time payments, RTP. This is like real time transfer protocol. And it had to do with like multimedia and stuff. But just from the person that sent it to me, I, I did look into it. And um, this is pretty much what I found. So there may be some more to that. There may not be. But all right, now we're getting into it here. So this is IETF. This is Interledger, Interledger Pro, uh, Protocol, Adrian Hope Bale Ripple. This is July 8th, 2016. This is basically just an overview of what the Inter Interledger protocol is. Uh, it's under the tools.ietf.org. Now we can say, see that they continue to move towards this path here of interoperability across the board. Remember, this is the Internet Engineering Task Force. This was May 1st, 2020, and I'm not even getting into the Hyperledger stuff yet because that is really why, why I made this video in the first place. I'm giving a little bit of background for you all. Um, this right here... This talks about basically multi-formatting and the ability to choose um, anything as far as payments are concerned. Be able to connect and be able to choose anything. ACH bank account, business identifier code, international bank account number, unified payments interface or UPI, Bitcoin address, interledger protocol address. I mean, it's very black and white what they're doing here, everybody. Um, this expires November 2nd, 2020, apparently. This is a draft, which looks like it's in the, uh, from what we read before in the Wikipedia, the draft is the second, the second stage of what they need to get through here. Um, but they're very obviously creating an, an internet that interoperates on, a value, on value chains, multiple value chains. And it's right in front of all of us here. So, I mean, you can even see here, this is from the same document. I just snapshotted this. This allows users with multiple bank accounts to choose which account to pay with. An application should allow dereferencing a pay to URI, even if the payment target type of that URI is not registered in the payment target type sub registry. This whole thing deals with interoper uh, interoperability across the board. Um, I'm going to move through some of the some of the basics here before I get into the hyperledger stuff. So 
Um, this is details I IETF operations. Um, two standard development organizations that generally work reasonably well together and play nice for the internet. The IETF funding arm, ISOC, ISOC, also is a significant contributor to W3C. Typically, IETF tends to focus on layer three and up protocols that run over the network, while W3C tends to focus on document formats and APIs. Now, this is IEEE. This is also, this was an interesting document that I found. This has a ton of information into it. If somebody wants to dive more into this, I will link this on Patreon and then I'll, and I'll release it to Twitter here also, but, um, and on YouTube, but this goes over Project Yubin, uh, Corda, where everything's at right now. And this is, was just released last month, I think. And I have not seen this circulate at all. This talks about um, some of the interledger prototypes for cash and securities. Um, some of the proof of concepts going on right now. This is Anquan with Quorum uh, and Anquan's permission blockchain. Deloitte with Ethereum and Hyperledger Fabric. We are about to get into Hyperledger more. NASDAQ with Hyperledger Fabric and Chain. I mean, this document has a ton of stuff in it, and I did not, I didn't see this circulating anywhere. This is Cross Ledger DVP. There's a ton of stuff in this. Um, maybe I'll link that in a couple of days. All right. Interledger, Inter invented at Ripple, developed as a standalone project. I think most of us in the XRP community know <clears throat> who contributed to Interledger and who it was invented by and who it was gifted to. So 300 plus contributors, banks, central banks, payment companies, tech giants, consulting companies, and blockchain companies. A lot about Interledger in here. Talks about snapshot of Ripple's 100 customers, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. I always see that. You know, is, is Bank of America really a Ripple customer? They've been talking about it for three years now. So obviously, it's just a matter of if and when they're going to be utilizing digital assets is what we all care about, right? The local um, Santander, we know. So this is newer for Interledger, um, Interledger Stream, but that really isn't necessarily what this video is about either. Now, a little bit more scope here. The Federal Reserve back in 2016, they speak about a particular industry development of note is the interledger protocol, which allows transactions to flow ac across different ledgers and create connection points between two or more digital ledgers. In effect, the protocol defines a set of procedures for proposing a payments path and cryptographically escrowing funds across a series of interoperable ledgers, and then subsequently executing the escrowed transactions once the recipient of the payment validates or acknowledges receipt of payment. Very interesting stuff here. About two years later, and for those of you that may not know, obviously Ripple sits on the board of the Faster Payments Task Force, which was um, organized by the Fed, the Federal Reserve. Um, this is Ripple's submission um, to the Federal Reserve for potential Federal Reserve actions to support interbank settlement of faster payments. Now, this is NASHA here. Cross-border payments network Ripple, was, which is one of the top funded fintech star startups, created the Interledger Protocol, a free, open source, and neutral web protocol that provides an interface for different ledgers to interact and maintain their balances in their own units. With a wider ad adoption of the protocol, Ripple's lab CEO Chris Larson said the spread of cross-border payment transactions is set to become real-time, whereas the cost is practically zero. All right, we're starting to get closer to this Hyperledger find that I, I do think is very interesting here, but I do want to give some background for everybody, like I said, because Interledger is tied into quite a bit. Um, this is a presentation by the World Economic Forum. Again, presenting kind of a map of interoperability across blockchains. And if you are not aware, Quants Overledger um, is supposed to basically create an interoperable level playing field among blockchains. Interledger can do the same thing. Interledger, from my understanding, even though, yes, it can do the same thing, it doesn't care, it's currency agnostic, the main goal of Interledger was basically to create interoperability between the legacy payment systems, um, DLT systems, and other value chains, which may not even be a, you know, a standard payment system, because it's, Interledger doesn't care, it's value agnostic, it, it can use whatever. Um, but I, di I did want to bring up Quant, because I know for a fact that... Um, 
that is another initiative right now that is um quant's got like 350 banks too so i mean i'm not going to sit there and knock that solution at all but that's to tie in blockchains um interledgers to tie in everything so Bank of England, and I actually posted a video, uh, I wanted to say back in January, you can find it on my YouTube, where there was a recent interview, I forget the uh, lady's name, but she talks about the future of payment systems and how Bank of England's renewed re real-time growth settlement system is not going to be built on top of distributed ledger, but it can connect for providers that want to utilize that. And I believe that that connection point is, is through Interledger because we can see here Bank of England, um, proof of concept with Ripple to explore synchronized movement of two different currencies across two different RTGS or real-time growth settlement systems linked using Ripple Connect and Interledger protocol. Now, this proof of concept was obviously successful here um, because if we go down to reflections and next stepped, uh, steps that were released by the Bank of England, Useful experience to develop the bank's understanding of synchronization and possible technical solutions. Our key learning points were the Interledger protocol was able to support synchronization of payments between two simulated RTGS ledgers. The Interledger protocol validator created a single source of truth between the two ledgers, eliminating the need for separate processes such as mutual re reconciliation between separate ledgers. Uh, then they talk about cross border payments, um, exploring these questions. But what I've seen across the board, and especially in 2018, 2019, all of these institutions and all of these banks with these proof of concepts that basically originated in 2015, 2016, we're looking to future proof. And then we're looking to, to develop scalable solutions upon CBDCs and all this stuff. But make no mistake about it where this is all going. This is all going towards digital assets. They need to solve certain problems first. They need to test the, the solution um, for the proposed problem very, very with, with a heavy eye of scrutiny because there's not a whole lot of making mistakes when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> That's kind of uh, ridiculous to say because we know that, you know, Swift inherently is an error prone um, messaging system. Um, but, you know, and across the board, there's, there's many inefficiencies. But everybody's so impatient in this community. Just wait because what is... What's coming is coming. It's, it's a matter of if, not when. Trust me. And that's not financial advice. Um, this talks about, in collaboration with Ripple, this is an ITU. ITU, there's um, another um, standards body that sets the definitions for basically the internet and telecoms. ITU is International Telecommunications Union. I have seen multiple things from them about Ripple, um, some about XRP, but I just wanted to do this one for a little bit of scope on Interledger. This is through the level one project. Mojo Loop was designed in collaboration with Ripple, Dwalla, Modus Box, Software Group, and Cross Lake Technologies. The Mojo Loop API was designed in collaboration with Ericsson, Huawei, Mahindra, Comviva, and Telepin. Mojo Loop is an open source for creating interoperable payment platforms that connect digital financial service providers and customers. Pay attention to these next two sentences. The main components of the Mojo Loop system are the central ledger for handling payments, central directory for account lookups and KYC and fraud sharing service for fraud prevention and AML. The central ledger for handling payments is based on the Interledger protocol to provide the following features. Conditional payments, which are cryptographically strong. Hmm, interesting. Messaging between direct scheme participants and the central ledger. Hmm, so that messaging, so we've got the payment end, we've got the messaging end. Interledger addressing enables inner scheme and over the top internet payments. So Mojo Loop was designed with the central ledger being based off of Interledger protocol or payments. All right, about W3C again, the World Wide Web Consortium, Consortium is the main international standards organization for the World Wide Web. Now, why would Ripple inter invent the Interledger protocol and gift it to the main standard setting body for the internet? Very interesting. It's probably been said before, but I don't care. Still interesting to me to this day. Uh, IETF, we already talked about. All right. Many of you have seen this Everest document many times, I am sure. But I found a paragraph, and then I did a little bit more digging into this. And this is very interesting to me. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you all into this with a grain of salt because this is the the bit of the deep dive of this presentation. The way that this reads and the what I've found basically almost seems like all of Hyperledger's code basings will be bridged by Interledger protocol. Um, I'll say that again. All of you know you've got Hyperledger Sawtooth, uh, Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Quilt. The way that what I've found here basically says that all of these the goal for the goal of NTT data to implement that into Hyperledger was to be able to bridge all of Hyperledger's siloed protocols with Interledger, which is very interesting to me. So if we read this, this is this Everest document. Let me make sure I keep my place. I'm not even gonna get into this. Cross-border real-time growth settlement, NTT data, where it basically says everything is running over ILP. Um, it actually says that already in 2017, which is crazy because maybe that is the case at this point because this was put out in like 2017 or 2016. Um, now it talks 2020, 2025, everything runs on ILP, runs through the XRP ledger, back to ILP for central banks. I mean, this is a crazy document, but that's not why we're here right now. Uh, many of you have seen that. This is what was interesting to me. This is an Everest pre presentation. Everest is an NTT data company. Pay attention to the way these paragraphs read, and then I'm going to get into what I found. NTT data is a member of Hyperledger, and as such, we aim to become the best technology partner for Hyperledger member companies who are working to adopt blockchain and distributed ledger-based solutions. With this objective, we are working on the development of the Interledger Java software, which will facilitate transaction interoperability across banks, settlement networks, and platforms. So they're working on a Java implementation of Interledger into Hyperledger. Let's see what I found here, though. This is crazy interesting to me. And this, this does deal a little bit with Interledger here. This is an intelligent systems monitoring presentation actually through PCIS, which is Pacific Coast Information Systems. Um, some of their technology partners include Bell, IBM, uh, Microsoft, uh, obviously Amazon, Apple, BlackBerry, Dell, Google, NetIQ. So they seem to be a legit corporation here. But again, take this with a grain of salt. But all I can do is present to you what, how this reads. And here's how this reads right here. Um, hold on one second. Hyperledger mem members, come on, hang on one second, everybody. All right, Ripple created this opportunity by partnering with Japanese company NTT Data Corp. NTT helped Ripple smooth out a few wrinkles in the Interledger protocol, which would make it functional with Hyperledger's more permissioned blockchain. All right. All right, here we go. This is what I was going to tell you guys. Together, the companies have submitted the results of that collaboration to Hyperledger, of which NTT Data is a founding member. If admitted, which it was, and you will see that it was, the new Interledger implementation could mean not just a new language for developers to build with, but a bridge to connect all of Hyperledger's open source code bases, including Fabric, Sawtooth, and Burrow. Let me read that again. If admitted, which it was, the new Interledger implementation, the Java Interledger implement, implementation into Hyperledger, could mean not just a new language for developers to build with, but a bridge to connect all of Hyperledger's open source code bases, including Fabric, Sawtooth, and Burrow. And we will see here, this is Hyperledger Quilt, which is a Java implementation of the Interledger protocol. They announced Hyperledger Quilt version 1.0 in, uh, Interledger for the Java platform in November 1st, 2019. And so you have a little bit of scope. I think all of us know how big Hyperledger is here, but Accenture, who is also RippleNet, American Express, who is also RippleNet. Um, the big one is DTCC, um, you know, which is, you know, trillions of dollars a year. Um, IBM, JP Morgan. So I thought that was very interesting. And I mean, 
I do. I, t I try to take everything with a grain of salt, but you know, this presentation that came out in 2017, everybody focuses on everything running over settlement. Um, well, s for, for settlement across the board and everything flowing through XRP. I I'm not going to sit there and tell you that's going to be the case because, you know, I personally believe that there'll be multiple, multiple winners in this. But I do believe that there are multiple key initiatives that needed to be thought of for the Internet of Value to actually be successful. And I don't believe that there's multiple go rounds for this either. And I believe that the ILP implementations across the board are huge. Now, if that's the case here, though, with Hyperledger, if the plan and the implementation of uh, the Java version of, uh, of Interledger into Hyperledger was meant to potentially bridge all of Hyperledger's open source code bases, I believe that that's, that's a crazy, crazy big piece of information. So um, I hope you guys all like this video. Uh, looking forward to some more news coming out um, tomorrow so I can put out some more info for you guys. I didn't want to put out a video Friday or Saturday because there was really no need to. Um, if you want me to sit here and talk about, um, you know, 0.1776 cents for XRP and $17.76 for silver and $1,776 for gold, I think that's fantastic. But um, XRP is at 17 cents and that's the bottom line for me right now. So. I hope you guys all have a great evening. All right, take it easy. Have a good one.